this is Observius bringing you guys another League of Legends commentary and today I'm going to be doing one over Cassidy the Void Walker. So I came in all prepared and all of that and that's because if you look at the upload date I'm doing this a day, barely a day after the singed video. But this is going to be a pre-game. It was requested so I figured I've got the time so why not do it now because Cassidy is a champion that I know fairly well. So, Kassin's a Voidwalker, as you can see on his attributes, he is an assassin, he's a mage, and you see that whole void thing on his arm, he is a melee attacker. Traditionally, you build Kassin in AP, but there are a few oddballs out there who do build him AD, and, you know, do the whole Riftwalk in, oh, you're silenced, you can't run away, or CC me, oh, you're slowed, you can't run away, oh, I'm penetrating your armor, and in order to fund all this, I'm whacking you and getting bunches of mana, too. You think you can escape me? Riftwalk forward to you. That sounds nice for AD, but as far as AP, it's more of a, I can stay on the edge and kill you and don't even have to auto-attack you. So, two different playstyles, we'll get into that in a little bit. Going on on this main screen, it does say he has average health. He has average health. He's not quite a squishy, because he is an assassin. I think you have the bruiser tag, if he wasn't so assassiny. In fact, several bruisers did have the assassin tag, like Jax. Um, but, you know, he has played more AP, but he has to have average health if only to make that melee build viable. As you can see, his actual attack power is relatively low. With Cassidy, you're going to be wanting to go into a Lick Bane or a Sheen type build, as, you know, he is more set up towards spells. And to encourage that, you can see on his spells, it does say strong. Now, his difficulty is hard because there are several different ways to play Cassidy. Another way to play Cassidy is stacking his ultimate, which is sort of like a flash. Uh, to do uh, additional snowball based damage. Again, we're going to get to those skills in a second and have it do tons of damage at the cost of lots of mana. On the flip side, it's all about positioning with casting. You have to know when to rift walk in, when to rift walk out, as well as, you know, charging up that uh, force pulse and that blah, 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 AoE slow that he does with it. So that's why his difficulty is hard rated. Personally, I think he's more of a medium, but Riot has rated him a hard difficulty. Going to his abilities, I've already mentioned several of them. Null Sphere is his bread and butter ability. It's basically cast and fires an ethereal bolt of void energy, dealing damage and silencing the target for a duration. What you're going to do is you're going to get this ability first. You're going to try not to harass with it at level 1 unless you need to, as far as defensively. Um, you're going to really want to start harassing with it at level 3 when it's level 2, as at level 1, they're going to regenerate the damage that you do to them, unless you couple it with ranged attacks, which you don't have. And if you go up and try to punch them in the face with your Null Sphere, maybe Null Sphere, Ignite, I sometimes like doing that as an early combo, and then no more Null Spheres till 3, or Null Sphere, Ignite, and a melee attack, if for some reason they want you in their face or something. I don't know. But Null Sphere, you're going to want to max out first, uh, it's just a really nice burst single target damage ability with a fairly short cooldown. And Netherblade is his melee attacks passively restore mana. You're going to want to get one point in this at level 4. If you want to never, ever, ever get a mana item on Cassidy, you're going to want to get one point at level 4. If you're a person who likes stacking Riftwalks, which I'm not because that's more of an EU thing. If you're a person who wants to go AD, then you're going to max this. If you're going to go AP and you're going to build a tier or some other mana item to help cancel this, you're going to go ahead and get a point in Force Pulse at level 4 instead. Force Pulse, going to this ability, it's he draws energy from spells cast in the vicinity. Upon charging up, Cassidy can use his Force Pulse to damage and slow enemies in a cone in front of them. Base, or in front of him. Basically, this means that every time six abilities are used within a certain radius of him, it's hard to tell the exact radius numbers without looking it up, but when abilities are used basically inside of his view, he gets a force pulse charge. At six, he can use the ability. If it's not at six, he can't use the ability. Because of this, he has a somewhat hard time farming those huge creeps of minions that are pushing on the sides of the map, as he'll have to have an ability charged in order to use it, but three, four-ish, with some decent AP, he can go ahead and just wipe out minion waves with one force pulse. This is mainly used to kill running away champions to initiate with a huge AoE slow thing. And by initiate, I mean the tank initiates and then you hit them all with the slow as your opening spell. Preferably, though, you throw on your, is it three-second silence? Maybe two-second silence? That Null Sphere started first. 
Riftwalk, the infamous Riftwalk that is cast into true signature ability, it is ultimate. Cast and teleports to a nearby location, dealing damage to nearby enemy units. Basically, if you land on top of them or in melee range of them, you deal damage to them. Additionally, multiple Riftwalks in a short period of time cause them to cost additional mana and deal more damage. So basically, it's got a varying recharge depending on your cooldown reduction and what level it is. But it's going to do more damage, of course, as you level it. But other than that, it's going to cost you 100 more mana per rift walk if you've rift walked within 7 seconds. So leveling the rift walk scale if you don't want to pay that extra mana is kind of futile. If you're not stacking rift walks, I, I don't know. Um, with Cassin, I've really been experimenting with not leveling rift walk until last, even after W and maybe not after W. W's pretty bad as it is. Um, but we'll see as far as how that goes. So those are his four abilities. Riftwalk is awesome just for escaping and all of that. He's been known in the whole Summoner's Journal lore thing as the uncatchable assassin. He doesn't be caught unless he wants to. His playing as is he has multiple item paths. He can go caster or DPSer or anti-caster, etc. His passive, by the way, reduces all abilities. I think it's all spell damage or something, all magic damage by 15% and he converts that into attack speed, which is 15% more over his entire attack speed. It's some multiplier. It's pretty cool. Kasten's ultimate has many uses and has a shorter cooldown than most, so use it often. Again, stacking rift walks, sneaking into a team fight, sneaking out of a team fight, just ganking somebody, running away. It's pretty cool. Ancient Golem buff to counteract rift walks, increasing mana cost. Again, this is more of a if you stack rift walks. And what is stacking rift walks? I'll show you maybe in a game. Uh, probably not in this game. I don't know. If you really want to see it, go look it up, because I'm not a Riftwalk stacking guy. Playing against Kasten, he deals mostly magic damage. Yeah, build magic resist against the mage. That's kind of obvious. If someone consecutively uses it, he pays more mana. Keep it in mind as you chase him. So yes, he might get away from you, but then again, he might not have enough mana to Riftwalk away. Then again, I don't know. He can Riftwalk over walls. I still kind of wouldn't chase Kasten unless I have a CC or a really close. Or maybe a slow. Slow would be awesome. It takes five spell casts for Kasten slow. Four spells to become castable. I thought it was six. I think that's out of date. If he levels up that ability, judicially use your own skills while leaning against him. Basically, if he gets a point in that ability or more than one point in that ability, be careful on how many skills you're using. Some champions like Kasten, and not Kasten, like Karthus with our Lay Waste or Cassiopeia with whatever that Q poison is or Rise, that, you know, spell machine gun, they can't help it. Ezreal, same thing. Some champions can't help it, but other champions you might want to watch which skills you use if you can afford to do that. His story, he basically like saw the void and turned into that and decided that the whole region must be defended. He has, you know, skins and all of that. I like this skin as is. So that's cast in the Void Walker as far as his skills and all of that. Going into Masteries, I used to be going 9, 7, 14, which, bear with me here, I'd get, you know, Spell Pen on 9, Strength of Spirit, just because it's awesome for the laning phase and late game, it's okay, depending on how you build him. And then this is just because I need the experience Mana regeneration is kind of a must since I don't build mana items. Greed is awesome. Get expanded mine because they're leftover points. And I got a point in Burning Embers instead as I will be carrying Teleport and Ignite. I sometimes used to carry, well I normally carry Ghost, Ignite, but I figure Teleport, Ignite is also a fairly valid combo as I have been going on a ward buying spree at the moment. Exhaust is fairly awesome. Ghost is fairly awesome. Again, this is more for chasing exhaust. If you take exhaust, take improved exhaust. Reduce that magic resist to help you kill that person, or at least escape. I don't know. Revive, again, is more of a choice skill. Fortify, I don't really agree with unless you're building him AD. Clairvoyance, I've sometimes taken because you only really need the ignite. You don't really need anything else. Rally, again, no. Clarity, if you have mana issues with Kassadin, take it. Flash is an early rift walk. It can be kind of really disturbing for their team if, you know, you rift walk to them and then you flash and then you rift walk again and suddenly you've closed half the map. Uh, that might be a slight exaggeration, but you get the drift. Cleanse, if you know you're really afraid of CC. Teleport is what I'm taking. Low on mana, recall. Teleport back, teleport in and back door, teleport to a ward and just suddenly gank their face. Smite, I have never seen a jungle cast in build. But hey, I'm sure there's one out there, and it's probably super duper amazing. But until then, 
Yeah, don't take smite unless you're jungling. Going to go off into runes. I was previously playing a game with a ranged carry. For this, I'm going to be taking my AP support page until my AP carry page is done. Um, this is what I took on Maokai, which is hilarious because he's more of a tank, but hey. Um, mana regen per level seals. Again, I'm not taking mana items or mana regeneration items, so I'm going to want this. Magic Resist Blues, because Magic Resist, he's an anti-mage. Uh, if you put him against the mage, cast it in wind. He's the jacks of, well, mages, I guess, assassins. Even though Jax is no longer an assassin, he's just a bruiser. Spell Penetration, it just gives you so much more damage going Spell Penetration. And then Gold Quintessences, which, if you do the math, this plus Greed in a 40-ish minute game gives me an extra 1,000-ish gold. Especially with me on a gold brightening spree, that's pretty awesome. If you want to compare this to Flat AP Quintessences, it evens out around the 17-minute mark as far as gold worth. At 17 minutes, I can buy an item that is, well, as good as, um, actually, not, not counting greed, at 17 minutes, it matches up to 5 AP in gold. With greed, I can actually probably buy a Dorn's item at, like, the 20 minute mark, and far suppress it to be like having HP quints and AP, if I just went and bought a Dorn's ring at the 22 minute mark, or however far in. Um, if I buy, like, you know, three of those. Anyways, that was an extra gold. Pretty awesome. That's what I'm going to be carrying with him. And I'm going to go ahead and try to keep this short, which means I'm going to go ahead and queue up. Now, I do very much apologize for the team that I'm going with in advance, as I am going to go ahead and be, you know, fairly insta-locking. And I hope my team will forgive me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that play now button, picking up Cassidy. I'm going to go ahead and try to lock in. Oh, sweet, we have a tank. That's awesome and looks like I didn't have to worry about that. Switching my runes up. Gonna go ahead and set this up to get ready to see you guys in the next section. And actually I just realized I need to launch fraps. So I'll be doing that in a bit. And yes, the top is cut off a little bit. Uh, that was a little bit my fault on adjusting the window size. Meanwhile, Grinch has still not picked a champion. We're waiting on him to pick a champion. So bear with us as, you know, this is going to go ahead and try to be the entire up to the end pregame. I'm going to request mid. Alright, may I mid? Looks like Kennen's going to be our fifth, which is going to be fun, as we're going to have tank Ramus slash initiator Ramus. KK. Okay, okay. um, many AoE CC slash fun AP shenanigans Kennen. Joe says, uh, what? No. Huh. Ramis says him and Mundo have mid. Uh, to mid. I am confused. Is he trolling? Is he not trolling? This is very confusing. Hmm. I think you are. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's very odd. Apparently we're going to have two mid. Um, see how that works. And I'll see you guys in the game.